It's Jeanette Gadotti of Acrid Body Language, and today we're in for a treat because I have with us Joyce Weiss. Joyce, what are we going to talk about today? Jeanette, we're going to talk about powerful communication strategies to get great results. And you specialize in what areas? Actually, conflict resolution, resolving, not creating it, and communication in general. Joyce and I specialize in human behavior. Absolutely. And bringing out our best performance. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Lead Thank us you. through it. Well, many times, Jeanette, I'm asked to um, define why did I get into conflict resolution. People are always asking me that because most people don't know how to resolve conflict and they wonder, oh, well, why is that my, my, my powerful uh, skill? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you something that happened about two years ago. Somebody called me to be on his TV show and he found me online because of my tagline, Be Direct With Respect. And he said, Joyce, I want, it's a half hour talk, and I want you to say why you got into conflict resolution and why respect is so important to you. So I got off the phone and all of a sudden I went blank. What am I gonna talk about for a half hour? Respect was always important as I grew up right. and obviously as I matured always, but I never really figured out why respect is so important. So I started interviewing people and that is what just released a story wow. that happened to me many, many years ago. Well, I graduated from college okay. and when I was about 21 and I became a teacher in Detroit. Oh, okay. And then I met a very talented attorney by the name of Jerry. And a year later, we were married. And that's when the honeymoon was over. <laughs> and ha uh, ha ha. And the battles began because it was like being in the middle of, of a courtroom. And there was he is a lawyer. <laughs> he is a lawyer. And there was that judge there all the time. Oh. And I never had a chance. Because attorneys are taught how to debate, how to articulate, how to make other people defensive. I didn't have a clue how to match that man of mine. So I knew something had to change. So after a couple months of this, all of my energy was, was just sucked for me, almost like um, Harry Potter with the defragmenters for those listeners who know about Harry Potter. And I knew something had to happen, so I started reading every book around about okay. assertiveness training. That was big back then. Started going to workshops, and I learned all kinds of strategies. And I started reading a book called *The Dance of Anger* by I like that. oh, I'll have to tell you about it later. Um, by Harriet Lerner, and she said, "When you change the steps of a dance, the other person will follow." Yes. I was wanting, and like many of our listeners, I'm sure, wanted to change Jerry. I wanted to change him. Whereas <laughs> after a real, why are you laughing? So I then realized I had to be the one to change the steps. So I was waiting for that moment because I learned, I was almost like the little, the little engine that could. Oh I gosh. learned all of the strategies. Now I was ready to become that locomotive and it happened. Finally, I was able to figure out how to use the strategies when I came home after I had some assessments and okay. every assessment said counselor or coach. Yes. And I had to go back to school for four years to become um, a counselor or a coach. So I could not wait to share this wonderful news with Jerry. I found myself. I'm excited. <laughs> uh -huh. Have you, Jeanette, have you ever been a caught off guard by a reaction when someone <laughs> didn't react like you thought? <laughs> happens all the time. Well, I did. Okay. And sure enough, Jerry said, no, I don't like that idea. <laughs> going to school is a waste of time. I would think it's better for you to go into sales. You're great at that. You're focused. So this is when I said, Joyce, don't give up. Be that little engine. I took a deep breath. I stepped Breath back good. and I said to him, I'm frustrated when I share my excitement about going back to school and becoming a coach because my ideas were discounted. Well, Jeanette, that one statement changed our relationship. 
don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. I mean, we still had some work to do, but at that moment, he looked at me and he said, okay, Joyce, if that's important to you. And after that, we did go to get some more coaching. I can't say that it was one book and one con communication. But it was a pivot for him. It was a pivot for him. And what about me? And that's when I said, I like this new Joyce. So that was a, a huge, huge change. And if you go 52 years later, we've been married for that long, and it's a fabulous relationship. Respect is totally equal. Our fights are not battles, and we actually listen to each other. So, Jeanette, when people say to me, well, what gives you the right to speak about conflict resolution? I always say, well, I married a lawyer. <laughs> and that's exactly what happens. They start laughing. Uh -huh. but, but, but I really wasn't kidding at the time. But the fact is, that is being married to Jerry taught me how to create all these strategies that we're going to talk about today. So, oh my gosh. And can you in the audience relate? I mean, in your relationship, do you not also have differences of op what opinions? Absolutely. And trying to tap into your inner voice. And I love this story, Joyce, that you really tapped into your inner voice mm -hmm. and allowed yourself to come out, to show up. And and yes. your, the response from your husband was what? Oh, it, it was again of, it was, at first he was shocked. <laughs> he was like, wait, excuse me, I'm the one here. But that was the beginning of, of him listening. And as a result of that experience, and of course I shared that on the TV show, uh, when I coach other people, I let them know that all it takes is a few sessions. It took us just a few sessions to really impact your life and to improve the quality of life. So from that story, even though it's an old story, it was inside and I let it out and, and I just hope that the listeners realize that there is hope. If you communicate, it could be a boss, mm -hmm. it could be a loved one, it could be a child, a friend. Earning respect is what it's all about, and mainly earning respect for yourself, and then it, then it will follow. Is Joyce is going to share with us these steps to achieve that for yourself in your life mm -hmm. with your relationships. So lead us through it. Great. Well, I've got three questions for um, our webinar viewers. Uh, number one, do you ever get up in the middle of the night uh, to think about a ne negative person. And number two, do you ever get up a few minutes later figuring out what you want to say to that person? And number three, would you like to get a better night's sleep? <laughs> and that's what this webinar is about because I coach people how to have those tough conversations so they can get that better night's sleep. And I always ask leaders this very important question. Are your people skilled at communicating in a way to make sure that others feel heard? So the topic yeah. is powerful communication secrets to get great results. And we don't all play in the sandbox. Some of us don't play nice in that sandbox. I don't care whether they're bullies at work whether they're negative people all the time, we all have them either uh, in our personal life or home life. So today, we're gonna talk about four strategies. Making conversation safe, using the gap to gain control, be direct with respect, which is a trademark of mine, awesome. to get great results, and verbal Aikido, to stop getting defensive. If you wanna take notes, you can, Afterwards, you're going to, there's going to be a link for you to get uh, every single strategy we are using today. I love your verbal Aikido title. Oh, well, just just stay tuned because we're going to, that's going to be the last one. So, it's Martin Luther King Jr. that I just used this quote of his: "Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter." And I'm telling all the time, I'm sharing these ideas with people because they say to me, Joyce, I wish I could be like you. 
you can. If I can do it, anyone can do it. And the next very important strategy or expression that I use is you get what you tolerate. Let's face it. If you tolerate gossip, you get what you tolerate. How about silence at meetings? I'm always get getting requests. How do I deal with that? Or what about those wonderful rolling eyes? <laughs> so are you tolerating this or this in total engagement? Oh my gosh, I love the body language in these images. <laughs> yes, and, and, and we can get engagement. We have to face some of the conflict, and that's what, what this is all about. Some people <laughs> roar. You may be a roarer. You may work with a roar, roarer. Um, some people, and I'm sure we all know people like this, they're like volcanoes. They're calm. All of a sudden they erupt and you wonder, how in the world do I deal with this kind of person? And some people just <laughs> stick their heads they, in the water and don't do anything. Oh my gosh, Joyce, you kill me. <laughs> well, it's what it is. And you get what you to tolerate. And my question is always, will it be chaos or calm? It's our choice. It's our choice. And so I like comparing dealing with conflict and the dandelion. You blow that weed in the wind and you have an extra, a very, an empty stem. But what happens the next day is you've got these gorgeous dandelion flowers all over your grass. You need to get to the root of the problem. Blowing in the wind will not, <laughs> no, it will not get rid of the problem. Deal with the conflict, it won't disappear on its own. First strategy, making conversations safe. How do you do that? And I'm going to tell you right now, when you learn how to make it safe, you can talk to almost anyone about almost anything. It's all about the intent. Now you notice I said almost, because there are some people mm -hmm. that these strategies aren't going to work. If you live or work with a true narcissist, <laughs> that is an entire new webinar. But most every other person that we're going to be talking about, you're going to be able to make it safe. And I'm going to tell you how I promised. Now, what I don't want, though, is please don't say this. Your existence gives me a headache. Go stand over there. <laughs> now, we all feel like saying that, obviously, t sometimes. So, the, what is the strategy? It is only saying two statements. I don't want, I do want. It's that simple. It's that, well wait, because I'm actually going to have you uh, <laughs> think of something and I'm going to put you on the spot, Jeanette. So let me explain to you, a, 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 give, give you a few uh, examples. And I am going to be using my notes at times because these are examples that uh, people have used in my workshops or coaching and they're, they're just gems. Okay, listen to the I don't want, I do want. I don't want you to think that you aren't pulling your weight. I think you're doing a good job. I do want to voice some concerns about a two hour lunch and how it impacts the team. But that just sets the, t you know, d doesn't it sound a little bit uh -huh. easier that way? It does. Or, I don't want to cause stress between us. Mm -hmm. I do want to have a conversation with you that's open. I love that. Say that again because okay. everybody can relate to what you just said. Great. Say I, that again. I don't want to cause stress between us. I don't want to cause stress between us. I do want to have an open conversation with Let's you. These two statements mm -hmm. are so powerful and important. Please. And matter of fact, Jeanette, I'm going to ask you, think of a conversation that you have to have soon. Maybe it could be a negative person at work or home. I'll think of a, my last work conflict. Perfect. Now, just tell us in a couple sentences what was the conflict about. Not, we don't need to okay. know everything, just briefly. Of course, conflicts are always about misunderstandings, mm -hmm. and we had a misunderstanding about uh, the schedule. And so oh. when someone was sick, she came back and thought that her old schedule applies when the sick time 
lapsed into a new schedule. Mm -hmm. So that was the conflict. So knowing the conflict, can you use the I don't want, I do want? Let's say I'm the person and you don't want to create stress. So how would you start the conversation? You're there. I love your body. You're so ready. So how would you, as we go back, how could you have started that conversation? I don't want to argue, right? I don't want us to fight. I do want us to be work colleagues. I want to maintain the work colleague. Perfect. And we're going to keep this situation because we're going to actually come back to it okay. a little later. But do you see how easy it is? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I actually started writing that on my hand. I don't want to. I do want to. And I use this at the beginning. Now, this is only the first of four strategies that we're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. But keep this in your mind. And I promise we're going to marry them all together. Right. Yes. I don't want to cause stress between us. I do want to have an open conversation. I love that because everybody can relate to that. Yes. So I have to take that elephant out of the room. <laughs> there are always people either for my individual coaching or the small group consulting that say, I'm too shy. I will never be able to do this. Or I I'm work afraid. with a bully. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Or I was brought up where I was told just to keep my thoughts inside. And I always tell people, I'm not here to tell you what to do. You have to select things for you. The idea is to take a risk. And the minute I hear people say, I'm shy, then I'm going to argue with them. Because you can use that as an excuse for your whole life. The idea is, are you getting the results that you want? If so, great. Continue. If not, you have choices and choice by strategies. <laughs> Absolutely. And the next, the next slide says it all. If you chicken out now, <laughs> you will pay the price later. I love your visuals. You have quite a sense of humor, Joyce. <laughs> Excuse me, if you don't have a sense of humor when it comes to conflict, we all have problems. And matter of fact, anytime. You can make the other person laugh. Yes. And that's going to help. That's going to help. That's going to help because yes. you release the good feeling endorphins and you flood yourself with dopamine and you relax and you break the ice. Absolutely. I love it. Humor always works. So now we talked about making conversations safe and now we're going to go to the second strategy gaining control. And we're going to do that by talking about the stimulus. Oh. We all learn about the stimulus in school. <laughs> the stimulus is something that happens to you. The response is how you, re how you respond, how you react. The gap, and this is such an important strategy, the gap separates the stimulus from the response so you can choose who you want to be. Many people don't see that space. For example, let's say somebody interrupts you. That's the stimulus. The response is you're going to say, don't be so rude, or whatever you're going to say. The gap gives you that one second to take a deep breath, step back, and say, how do I want to react? And maybe after taking that step back, you're not going to be sarcastic or nasty. You're just going to say, hey, I want to hear what you have to say. First, want to finish, that's my statement. Now, it, this takes practice. Mm -hmm. Take, now I'm telling you, I teach this stuff. And every once in a while, I forget about the gap. And I say to myself, Joyce, the gap, you teach it. Why? Pause, because we're all yeah. human beings. But the gap is such an important strategy. We have a space to consider alternative responses. You still may want to be sarcastic, may want to ignore them, take revenge, you may want to let it go, and you may even want to thank them. So the idea with the gap, again, is you're selecting how you want to respond. It gives you that moment. So before we even, and the triggers are such an important part, I've got another question for you. I'm not going to ask you what the situation is, but let's get back to the same situation okay. at work. How important 
would the gap have been at the time? Could you have used it? Oh, definitely. Tell me how it definitely. could have helped you. If I could have paused mm -hmm. and really reflected on giving both of us space, and as you said, hear her out, mm -hmm. right? And I loved your statement a few minutes ago. You said something about, I want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. So when we listen more, we allow the other person to talk, and then it just dissipates all that negative energy and anger. Bingo! She got, she's so smart. <laughs> Jeanette is, that, that's why I collaborate with this lady. So, I recently added triggers to my workshop, and because we all have triggers, it could, in, the, in our environment, it could be that person who's always talking about themselves, the me person. It, that trigger, it just triggers you, like, oh, you can't stand being in the room with them. It could be that superior person. They're just ready to put you down. It could be the person who's always pushing yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. And it could be your boss. It could be that person who was always saying, stop, or like that last photograph. It could be that mean, negative person. So, triggers are nothing but stimulus that impacts the behavior. We have to be aware of what's going on, engage yourself to find choices. So, there are still people that trigger me, whether they're family members, whether they're <laughs> friends, whether they're clients. Aww. I just walk into a room, I know that it's the way they sound, the way they're, I know they're judgmental, whatever it is. So the triggers work when you know what sets you off. Like this says, be aware of what's going on. Before you go to the meeting and you know there's somebody that rubs you the wrong way, be aware that that's a trigger for you. Engage yourself to find choices. So getting mad at a chair, if someone gets mad at a chair, that person, I think, has to think about their mental health. Why get mad at a chair for being a chair? A chair can't help it. It's the same way as that person that triggers you. Why get mad at that person who interrupts you all the time? That person is who they are because of who they are and not because of you. We take things so darn I personal. It's so important to, to know your triggers and they're only a problem if our response to them creates stress. There could be good triggers. There could be people that trigger you. For example, you and I have this energy and we speak the same, we're, we're very um, quick. Uh, we, there's a lot of things that trigger. The minute I hear your voice, they say, this is gonna be a good experience. It's not always like that with people though. So the main idea is, is this really the best use of your time to get mad at these people? Our reaction is 80% us, right? And 20% yes. the situation. So if somebody is negative or toxic, remember that is their luggage that they are uh, carrying. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you can't change that, but you can change how you react. So now we talked about creating um, a safe space in for her communication. And we talked about using the gap and triggers. Now we're going to talk about a very important strategy. Be direct with respect. Be direct with respect is a learned skill. It's a willingness to risk rejection by communicating directly yet gently. It deepens the relationship and it resolves issues. Be direct re with respect is a trademark of mine because people understand immediately what that means. And as you heard from my story, respect is so important for me because mm -hmm. there are too many people in the workplace who are not getting the respect that they deserve. And that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. So let me tell you what be direct with respect isn't. Be direct with respect. It's not sarcasm. It's not rudeness or you get paid to work <laughs> not to think. I've heard that way too many times. It's not Ted Goff, and I love his work, and he's given me permission to use his cartoons. I don't have time to write performance reviews, 
So I'll just criticize you in public from time to time. You're laughing, but how many times, I'm sure you, I've heard people say, my boss criticizes me in front of my colleagues. It's not, I'm ready to listen to your concerns. Oops, out of time, thanks for coming to our feedback session. <laughs> it is actually, I've heard these, these that's why Ted Goff and he is so good at what he does. So it is, now let me tell you what it is. Truth with heart, it focuses on results, it creates a win-win situation, it respects yourself and others, it's like this cartoon. Can't the two of you just get along with these two cavemen? So, now we're going to get to a, the strategy that goes with be direct with respect, which is the power talk formula. I am, when I, because. You'll notice the word you is not in that strategy. I am, it shows your emotional response. And I promise, Jeanette, we're going to have several examples. When I, it's non-judgmental. You're just talking about how you see something because how it affects you. For example, I was embarrassed when I shared my ideas at the team meeting because my suggestions were strongly rejected without any explanation. I understand that all ideas can't be accepted by top leadership. There is silence in many of our meetings because if the team doesn't feel listened to by leadership. That statement came directly from one of my clients. Yes. And she ended up, after learning the Power Talk formula, she used it. She used the I am when I because. And there was there's always a risk, folks, when we use these strategies. They could backfire. That's why I said we always have to practice. Uh -huh. Another example, I'm frustrated. I am frustrated when I can't speak with you now because I want to help. I have a report due at 3 o'clock. Please call me back at 3 o'clock. It just, it's very safe, it's very kind, but it's also, you can't do it right now, you don't want to be nasty, but you've got to be assertive. Now this came from an HR client, and when I share it with people, people say, no, nah, you're making this one up. These are real quotes from real clients Absolutely. about real conflict. Yes, and this, these are the, after they learned the Power Talk formula, these are the examples that they use. An HR client was really upset because her supervisor reprimanded her in front of her team. And she said, and I'm gonna marry the I don't want, I do want, with be direct with respect or the Power Talk. I don't want to be insubordinate. That's fair. I do want to do a good job at work. Mm -hmm. I was embarrassed when I was disciplined in front of my oh. employees because this discounted my credibility. Do you hear the power? Yes, even in the vulnerability. Yes. Mm -hmm. Say that once more, it's so profound. I don't want to be insubordinate. I do want to do a good job at work. I was embarrassed when I was disciplined in front of my employees because this discounted my credibility. And everybody can relate to that. Right? Absolutely. Your examples and your strategies are right on point. Well, I'm, I'm glad because to hear, because this is at least 35 years of practice of learning things on my own and mainly listening to people what their frustrations are and I'm here as a conflict resolution consultant and coach that I've experienced myself and all these examples from my clients just just help each other right and our natural tendency is what during conflict when you don't have the skills that Joyce is talking about we tend to avoid the other person you know uh, sweep it under the rug and yes. totally not deal with the issue. What I love about Joyce is that she allows you to develop the skills so that it empowers you to say what you need to say and go past the barrier and get to the other side. So you can get a better quality of life and get the results that you need and mainly to break those patterns, to break those patterns of not being listened to and yet still maintain and, and often 
enhance the relationship. Oh, yes. Enhance the relationship. Joyce and Jerry were able to achieve a higher level of marital satisfaction and respect because she found her voice. Mm -hmm. And they both then gathered a higher level of respect. Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Trust me, if we can do it, anyone can do it. So, we talked about making conversation safe. We talked about using the gap, including the triggers. And we talked about um, how to speak your truth with be direct with respect. Now comes the last strategy okay. that you couldn't wait to talk about. Jeanette, verbal Aikido. I love this title. So, verbal Aikido. Let me first actually show what an example. I'm going to put my hands out and I want you to do whatever you want with your hands. You're pushing me. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, so you push me even harder. Yeah, what a shock! When people push our buttons, Jeanette, it, you are so perfect. That's exactly what happens. We push back. It's a power struggle. Total power struggle. So, when Jeanette did such an excellent job of pushing me back, that's what I don't want people to do. Verbal Aikido, and I'm, we're going to get into exactly what it is, let me explain right now, the person who pushes back is not the one that's got the control and power. For example, you're always late. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I pushed you back. Versus, you may be surprised at this answer, but you're always late. You're right, I'm always late, and it must drive you crazy. It's put, pulling back, my God, I'm the one now with the power. Yes, you are. Because you actually softened the power struggle. Yes. By accommodating his statement or yes. her statement, which took the, that, that person off guard, but it lowered the intensity. It allowed peace to come through just by that yes. simple statement. And say it again. You're right. I am always late. It must be frustrating for you, or you know, something like that. How can but someone argue with that? They when, can't. When the other person just told me that I'm always right, I must be frustrated with that. It's right. It just dissipates the anger and the frustration. Absolutely. I love it. And the whole idea, when we get to the um, to, to describing a little bit more, is just to remember um, not to push back. The whole idea in any kind of martial arts, the person who pulls back is the one in control. And that's why I call it verbal Aikido. I love so, it. Aikido is a Japanese art of self-defense that employs holds and blocks. You've seen it on TV or maybe you were even uh, gifted and you've got different belts. It debilitates the strength of the opponent just as we, we showed. By non-resistance. Yes, by non-resistance. It's a skill that gives you back the control, not reacting to the attack, and it focuses on what can be done. So the founder of Aikido said, and this is so, so powerful, he said, I want people to listen to the voice of Aikido. It is not for correcting others, it's for correcting your own mind. That is the answer for so much conflict, to resolve it. Indeed. What can I do to ignore it, to confront it, to walk away from it? Sometimes it's okay to even walk away from it. It's you changing that other person won't, unless it's like the book Dance of Anger, everything to do with the keto. If you're in a relationship that you want to deepen and it, you're close with them, this is where when you change your steps, the other person automatically will follow and the relationship, like you said, is going to be so deep. It's like a dance or a mobile. Yes. When you pull on one partner, everybody else in the system moves as well. I love it. Yes. This it's is a real life example. Something goes wrong uh, at work. And somebody blames you. And that'll never happen with you because <laughs> I know who you are. But 
um, the person, the angry person would say something. I asked for this project to be done three weeks ago. What's wrong with you people? So before, if I didn't know verbal Aikido, I do nothing but make excuses. Mm -hmm. We're short staffed. <laughs> Our computer broke. Uh -huh. Whatever. We, 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 we fired people. We don't have the right ones. Excuses will not create solutions. All it does is create more problems. I always, actually I learned this from Jerry, whenever somebody calls about the phone or our, or our, our cable company, um, oh, I'm really sorry. And he always says, I don't care if you're sorry. I don't care if you apologize. I want results. It's like people right. were trained to apologize, which is fine, but get the results. And that's what's missing. So now, instead of saying, um, excuse, 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 you say something like, you're right, it's been three weeks. I apologize for this. I'm going to have it in your hands today. We have been short-staffed. That's no excuse. Call me. Here's my cell phone. If you don't receive it in an hour, you can count on me. Oh, my gosh. What a shift. And the three words that dissipates it all from the get-go is, you're right. You are right. And then yes. everybody's ears are open instead of excuse, excuse, excuse. Absolutely. You're right. Yes. Now, you're not always going to say that because maybe they're wrong. If you can use it, it's very powerful. If not, there are other strategies, but mainly it's the idea don't get defensive and don't make excuses. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest takeaway, I hope. Um, Robert Kennedy, I love this story. Love it. I use it all the time. When he was asked to uh, become the eternal Attorney General of the United States, he knew that he was going to be pushed by the mm -hmm. press because they were going to say, oh, your brother, your brother. So whether he knew verbal Aikido or whether he just practiced with all of his coaches, sure enough, I'm the press. Okay, Senator Kennedy, what gives you the right to be Attorney General of the United States? This is Senator Kennedy. Took a deep breath, he stepped back a little. That's a great question. You have to go to a really good school. You have to know a lot of people, and you have to have a brother who's the President of the United States. Do you see how you rea reacted? Oh, yes. If you look at that story in real Brilliant. life time, that's exactly what the press did. They Brilliant. smiled. That captures verbal Aikido. Totally. I love it. And he used humor in that too. Oh, yes. And he validated the objection but used it yes. to his advantage. Absolutely. And it's a skill, and that's, that's all we're practice, talking about. Practice, practice, until uh, perfect. Yes. Uh, for those of you who are leaders, or maybe you're emerging leaders, this is a quote from Eleanor Roosevelt. Develop skin as thick as a rhinoceros's hide. Understand that with leadership comes criticism. Accept it, be ready for it. Be strong in the face of unjust attack. We are going to be criticized. Everyone isn't going to like us. That is irrelevant. Are we doing the job that we're supposed to do? Are we saying things in a way where people feel heard and respected? If so, that's a darn good leader in my eyes. So I hope that you've learned or relearned um, some important strategies to improve your communication and quality of life. And I challenge everyone to remember to make conversation safe with I don't want, I do want. To use the gap, to step back and make a decision. How do you want to respond to that stimulus? Remember the trigger and set yourself up. Be prepared so that you are ready for that person that drives you crazy. <laughs> you allow that person to drive you crazy. Third one is use be direct with respect. Yeah. One strategy is going to give you that power. And the fourth is verbal Aikido. And the minute you want to get defensive, get into the gap and realize, nope, 
that person's trying to push my button, just like Jeanette was pushing against my hand. Let's do that. Okay, nope, I'm going <laughs> to be the bigger person. So if we circle back to one of my first slides from Martin Luther King Jr., our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. And don't forget, you get what you tolerate. <laughs> Joyce brings her strategies to life with these successful stories. Hey Joyce, tell me about Maria. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> Maria came to me uh, when she decided to take the Communication Skills at Work program. And she had a real challenge. She had a micromanager as a boss. We know those types. Yes. And she knew that something had to change. And the reason why she called, something happened right before, and she was so frustrated. Her micromanager ridiculed her in front of her direct reports. Oh, no. And she called me, and she said, Joyce, there's other things that he's done like this. Can you please help me? And I said, absolutely. So one of the first things that we did is we practiced be direct with oh. respect, which is one of the strategies in the course. Yes, yes. And so this is what she actually came up with. A couple days after, she went to her boss and said, I was caught off guard when I was ridiculed in front of my direct reports because it totally discounted my leadership skills. Oh, okay. She promised me that she said it, because we practice this too, with strength. She stood up straight. Her voice was strong. And Rhea called me right after, and she said her boss was impressed. He said, Maria, it's about time <laughs> that you stood up for yourself. You've got great leadership skills, but you oh. needed to get stronger. You're on your way. Oh my gosh. Yes. Initially, the story sounded, you know, like a confrontation or a conflict, mm -hmm. but then you turned it around and Maria was able to practice beforehand with you, her coach. Oh, yes. So that she felt confident before taking it live. When <laughs> you said practice, which we did, whether it was she sent me three or four emails and we kept on changing her communication. Right. But tweaking it's, it. Tweak it. It's like riding a bike. You've got to practice until you get on that bike and you don't need those training wheels. Okay. So, so Maria practiced and practiced and then finally she said it to me like, like breathing and it came out great. So I was so proud of I her. I love that story with Maria. We've had these experiences before, right? Where maybe the boss says something and may not even have meant it. Mm -hmm. But we somehow took it to be discounting. So that Maria story, which yeah. is a live client, oh, absolutely. A, a real situation mm -hmm. that we all can relate to, and Joyce was able to turn it around and help that client, Maria, to feel even more empowered. Yes. So we heard about Maria. Any yes. other success stories that you want to share? Well, Brad didn't come to me directly. Okay. Brad's supervisor called me up <laughs> and said, Joyce, I don't know if you're going to be able to help us. And Brad has got really good leadership skills. He also has anger issues. Oh, no. Oh, no. So Brad didn't come to me, but his supervisor did. So I said, well, I don't know what's worse. <laughs> I know. So I said, why don't we have an introductory communication? And he said, great idea. So... We had the conversation, and the supervisor said to Brad, I want you to work with Joyce if you're willing to. Uh, she helps people, you know, take their leadership skills and get them to the next level. I asked Brad a few questions, and I had him ask me questions on how it would be working with me uh, during the communication skills at work coaching course. And he said, yeah, let's go for it. I'll try maybe one or two sessions. I said, that's fine. Yeah. One of the first things that Brad and I did, I gave him the DISC assessment. What's that? And that's a tool that um, measures your, your, your strengths and areas improvement, your behavioral style. Okay. And we found out, no surprise to Brad or me, that uh, Brad is a perfectionist and went off the page on the charts. And he said, I don't like being on teams. I can't stand it when people give the uh, criticism. Oh, and it was, who likes that? No one likes it, but that anger came out, you know, because 
He said, Joyce, I know I need to work on this, but I got to tell you, I don't want you to change me. I like the way I am. Of course. I just want to make sure making your working condition a little better, you know, to make your leadership and your communication better. He said, fine, I'll do that. I so, liked how you reframed it so that you can bring out his best. Oh, yes. that's what coaching is. Yes. Coaching, <laughs> I mean, people always say, I don't want you to, and they, so many times people say, I like who I am and I'll change me. I'm happy to say that after Brad took the DISC assessment, he okay. realized that uh, he doesn't do well on teams. He doesn't like criticism, like I said before. And so we practiced him getting into the gap. And what that is, is him taking a step back, taking a breath, and realizing that he has to listen better. And he did agree, okay, everyone says I need to listen better. <laughs> That's a clue. <laughs> yeah, so we practiced some other strategies, and he started listening. And the most important thing is after only maybe a, a month and a half, he came back, Jeanette, to tell me that his team gives him constructive feedback, and he's not looking at, it is criticism like he used to. He is still a perfectionist. He likes that side of him because he does great work, but he's relaxed more. Oh, thank goodness. And that's what his supervisor wanted him to do. Thank goodness. To relax, listen to the feedback, which feedback is. It's not criticism. And I'm happy to say that he was able to take all the strategies that we practice during the course. He's on to, to, to a very successful career now. Yeah, the gap was the strategy that he really picked on and it just, it was like the answer. Yeah. Step back, you take a couple deep breaths and you start listening to what's going around and not your head saying, oh, what is she gonna say to me this time? But hey, I'm open to you, please yes. tell me, share, What's on your mind? Let's see how we can make things work. He, he sounded like an entirely different person after only a few yes. sessions. And so you kept his strength yes. and refined the edge of mm -hmm. his anger so that he could be more receptive. Yes, we covered the gap, but which secret was that? Uh, secret? That was number two. And in Maria's story, what secret was that? That one was be direct with respect, which I believe that was three. Three. Yes. Okay. What about Sue? So Sue called me. And she said, Joyce, I've been reading your blogs, and I just received a promotion. And I said, that's great. And she says, that's the good news. I said, well, what's the bad news? I received a promotion. <laughs> I said, okay, would you like to give me a few details? I can see how that's a double-edged sword. Yay, you've got the promotion, yes. but oh my God, am I ready to, for the responsibility Absolutely. of the promotion? Absolutely. So what did you and Sue work on? Well, on how to deal with her direct reports who used to be her colleagues. Oh. They used to be her friends. They were jealous Equals. of Sue because they should have gotten the promotion, not Sue. That's what they were saying to each other, oh, and it came back yeah. to her. They didn't listen to Sue. They didn't respect her. They just gave her a hard time. When you get a promotion, especially when it's with your equals, like you said, it could, not always, but it could create some conflict. She signed up for communication skills at work. She practiced be direct with respect, which is a way to build deeper relationships with people uh, who you like, but who you are having a challenge with. Mm -hmm. So we practiced that. We practiced the gap again. That's something that we did with uh, Brad. So when people at the beginning were criticizing her and, and ever actually talking behind her back, and we practiced what she would say to them in a meeting, all kinds of strategies, communication strategies. It took the entire three months of, mm -hmm. of the course, mm -hmm. and because she had a lot of things to learn. And like you said, at the beginning of her story, Sue also had to feel confident. Yes. She was already competent, but she had to feel confident. In this new role yes. of leading yes. the team. Can you tell me a, a little bit about how she turned it around so that mm -hmm. the peers could be on the same page with her leading instead of uh, their previous relationships together? Well, I'm glad you asked that because 
so many times when people talk about conflict, they say, I don't like it, or they say, I don't know how to deal with it, I'm too shy, and then nothing gets done. Sue was motivated, and that's why she called me. So what she ended up doing is having these tough conversations that we talked with about you. a lot. Yes. Oh, absolutely. With me first. Practicing. Practice, practice, practice. The right practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. So we practiced whether it was be direct with respect yeah. to the gap and also secret number four, which is verbal Aikido. And I know My that's your favorite. favorite. <laughs> no. And you can see each one of her strategies in the right situation can bring out the best in the client situation. So glad you said that. Yes. Because each one of these stories, they, they all came for different reasons. People come for all kinds of reasons, and they decide to take the class. These but three are, are my superstars. I was so proud of them. So you see how we use real-life clients with real-life situations, oh, work situations, and how Joyce was able to implement some of the secrets and strategies that we covered in our webinar and make it real for those clients. I want to learn more about what it, what's the program called? Communication Skills at Work. Tell me more about that, Joyce. Well, matter of fact, I put together a PowerPoint presentation. Oh, good, good, good. That's I, the reasons why people sign up and also who signs up. Okay. Are you ready? Let's take a look at what you've prepared. So, Joyce, you told us about Maria, Brad, and Sue. Mm -hmm. What makes people interested in communication skills at work? And tell us more about this program that you have. Well, the reasons why they come many times is for, because they deal with a bully. It could be a boss. It could be a colleague. Narcissists. And I'm going to tell, tell everybody a very important fact is that you got to change yourself when you deal with a, a narcissist. You're not going to change them. And the reason why I brought that up immediately is that many times they sign up for the course because they say, I live with a narcissist or my boss is one. And, and what we go through and what we practice is how, they, how the client has to decompress and figure out how they can deal with them. And the thing is, since relationship and communication is interrelational and interpersonal, mm -hmm. when one party changes, it changes the whole dynamic Yes, us, the interaction, just like a, a child's mobile. Absolutely. I want to hear more about communication skills at work. Hey, okay. well, who was the program for? Senior level managers or executives, managers, directors, emerging leaders. I mean, it's perfect for any of the people I just mentioned, but especially emerging leaders. Okay, I got promoted because of my IT skills. How do I take care of these people? And they may be older you know, yes. than I am. And individuals who want to develop their career. And what I notice is the skills that a person, a business person, learns through your program, they can apply it to their personal life as oh, well. Absolutely. Father or mother or, or children, mm -hmm. adult children perhaps, it helps all relationships. Yes, it deepens the relationships. So now I get a, a better idea of who the program is for. Mm -hmm. Let's go inside the course. What's all involved? We're going to troubleshoot real life scenarios. So people are going to bring their conflict to me. Every single person has something different. So that's why I say real work scenarios. We're going to personalize the course to the client's needs. Every, like all three stories that I shared, they're all different. This is what is a look, so much different than some of the other coaching courses, is that people are going to stay connected with me for three months via email. And what is part of it is I'm going to get back to every single email, whether it's a question, whether it's, hey, Joyce, I tried this and I want to brag it worked or I tried it and eh, I need some help. We're going to discover the patterns and blind spots that people may not even be aware of. And we do this because the DISC assessment that I refer to is included. And this comes, this is an assessment that I love working with because people do discover 
no awareness about themselves. That they, they absolutely didn't know. What does DISC stand for? Is it an acronym? Yes, it stands for uh, the four different behavioral styles. There's the dominant or direct. There's the interactive. There's the steady. And then C is the careful. Okay. And cautious. So each candidate who signs up for this program, you mm -hmm. take them through this disc and it's a report? 23 pages, yes. Okay. And we not only that, we'll go through the evaluation. To, so they, if they have questions, they, they ask me. because And people, some of my clients, and actually Jeanette, even me, I am a client of myself. <laughs> and I refer to my own uh, disc. And I, I took it many, many years ago. You know, I can see how valuable that is because it provides the insights into who we are yes. so that we can relate better to other people. Absolutely. The bottom line is people are going to improve their working condition. And I always say, and for in all my workshops, get ready to have fun, learn, and re-energize. Because when people work with me, even though the, the topics are very serious and, and important and very important, I learned a long time ago that having fun and feeling life when we're experiencing these challenges is all part of success. So I have such a good time with my clients. And we laugh a lot, even though it's the very serious topics. I can relate to that because all throughout my webinar experience in producing this webinar with my friend Joyce, it hasn't even been work. I know. It has I not know. been work. And what I appreciate is that you told us and you shared with us the story of Maria, Brad, and Sue. Mm -hmm. And as you were telling us these client stories, they were real. They were real to me, and I'm sure they are real to the audience because we all have been there or we know a friend or a loved one yes. who's been there and experienced what you said went through for Maria, Brad, and Sue. And so I like how you troubleshoot and personalize the course mm -hmm. to that client's needs. And let me tell you something. You just said something very important. Maybe the person, um, you, who listened and watched the webinar, maybe you don't need communication skills at work, but maybe you know, yes. right, a colleague who, <laughs> or, a who spouse. <laughs> or a spouse who, who complains about the same thing and nothing ever gets done. It's a resource. People are always looking for resources, how they can get unstuck. Yes. So if it doesn't apply to you right now, mm -hmm. And believe me, all of those, you know, work-related issues will come to us and we will fa be faced with these mm -hmm. tough conversations and, and sticky situations. Contact Joyce or me directly. Yes. And we will provide your, your person with the webinar mm -hmm. and also Joyce will explain what she has to offer so that that person can really reach the full potential and get unstuck. Absolutely. And I help people stop being silent about things that matter. Exactly. We want you to reach your full potential of communication effectiveness. Mm -hmm. And Joyce is your go-to communication coach. So what do we get when we enroll? Lots of bonuses. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. You're going to get three months of email connection with me for free. It's a $4,500 value. You're going to ask me questions before your tough conversations to ensure that you get the best results. You're going to receive individual coaching and feedback from me via email, again, for three months. And I'll respond to every email with feedback and support. I like how you go through with the client and iron out those wrinkles mm -hmm. and kinks so that they're real life execution is as smooth as possible. Oh yeah. And you want to get rid of the potholes and the obstacles beforehand yes. in yes. the three months. And we've been talking about the disbehavioral style assessment and evaluation, and that's a two hundred dollar value. And people will discover their behavioral styles as well as your coworkers to become a master communicator. Even though their coworker may not be taking the disc, we can figure out is this a person 
who's like you? And is that why maybe you're having this conflict? Is the person not like you? Then that's another reason why. And the disbehavioral style actually goes over how you, the best way to communicate with the other person. You can see I'm sort of passionate about this. And you can see that even though you are the same person, how you deliver your message may differ somewhat depending on if you're dealing with Bill Mm -hmm. or Steve or Susie. So when you know the other person's style, Mm -hmm. you can also tailor your communication so that both of you have better communication experience. Something that just happened in one of my trainings, we went over, there were 30 people and we went over the behavioral disc styles. One individual, we became best friends after this, said to me, Joyce, I don't really care if people like me or not. I'm very strong. I'm very direct. I'm very dominant. And then they just have to be less um, sensitive. (laughs) Everyone in the room, they all work together, right? They're all kind. They started to laugh, just Uh like you did. Uh Uh And he said, I don't care about them. And then I said, okay, you get in my shoes. Let's call him Tom. Uh, What do you think you'd say if you heard somebody say this? And, And he's... He absolutely, you could see, he totally Aww. melted. He said, maybe it's time for me to realize it's not that they're sensitive. I maybe like I'm too that. much. That's the power, the power mm-hmm. of this. I like how yeah. you were able to have Tom step into somebody else's shoes. Yep. to see Tom's own behaviors, yes. and it shifts the, the viewpoint. Absolutely. And we're going to reinforce your strengths and areas of improvement and include it as an email of evaluation to go over your results in the 23-page assessment. There's the Communication Skills at Work Program Manual and Self-Study Guide, which is a $199 value. And this is 30-plus years of, of my experience working with the best clients possible and I put them all together into this program manual. It's easy to follow. It's a self-study guide. People, and this is an important piece of the course, they consume the content at their own pace. I love that. So if life gets in the way, as long as we stay connected and you move forward, uh, there's no time limit. Plus, you've got, you're working with me for three months. And we're going to apply the strategies and design your own personal action plans. As you said, life gets in the way. I like how the client determines the pace and the client remains in control. And then there are two 30-minute phone coaching sessions with me. It's a $300 value. And so I'm extremely clear here. When I talked about Maria and Brad and Sue, they took the course, plus they signed up with extra coaching sessions. For communication skills at work, if you don't want those extra coaching sessions, trust me, you're going to be fine on your own. You're still going to have 30 minutes, a phone session with me before you start taking the course so we can figure out what strategies do you need to cover. Then you take the course, and then when you're finished, you have a 30-minute phone conversation with me, phone coaching session okay, this is what I learned, this is what I'm going to do. And don't forget, between these two sessions, there's three months of email that we're in touch all the time. Okay, I like that. Yes. The client is immersed in the program Mm -hmm. and is continually getting input and feedback from you and refining his or her approach. Absolutely. You know, Joyce, this is amazing. Thank you, Jeanette. And one of the best testimonials and compliments that I ever received was from Todd, who wrote, Thank you, Joyce. I'm finally getting the respect that I deserve because of the skills that I learned through your course. And what is so important is that anyone who takes the course can get not only Todd's results, but whatever they need to improve their working condition. And through those stories of Maria, Brad, and Sue, Mm -hmm. and Todd's testimonial, you really shared with us real-life client experiences. Well, one of my passions is making the world a better place, one person at a time. And that's why I'm offering this premier program to our webinar guests, people who know the value of continuous 
learning, you will receive more than $5,000 worth of value, including the three months of email coaching with me, two 30-minute laser-focused coaching phone calls, the DISC assessment, an easy-to-follow course manual. And the VIP investment is only $897. Now, this special is available to you until Thursday, March 14th. And we usually make the availability only one or two days after the webinar, but we're going to extend it for an entire week. And the expiration date is what? Midnight, Thursday, March 14th. And thank you for offering this opportunity for those who attended the webinar. And all you have to do in order to learn more about this is to click on this orange button that says Get Communication Skills at Work. I look very forward to working with you.